स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया students um so in the previous class we uh, we were sort of um, looking at the um, application of uh, vector calculus in the mechanics and we tried to derive uh, equation of um, uh, or formula for momentum angular momentum um newton's law of uh, newton's second law of motion and uh, we saw that uh, the force p can be written as uh, m times uh, acceleration where m is the mass of a particle and p is the applied force or impressed force and a is the acceleration of the particle so uh, um, today we will uh, try to derive some of the uh, some equations of motion where we see how vector calculus uh, is uh, useful to write the equation of motion of such uh, particles uh, moving under some uh, physical law and we will try to derive their path and um, things like that so uh, let's start with so in the previous class uh, we had this formula p is equals to ma and uh, this formula was obtained uh, which is basically called as newton's second law of motion and uh, sometimes people also call it as equation of motion of a particle now let's start with our very first example um, example 1 so motion under gravity so motion under gravity means uh, suppose you dropped a particle or you threw a particle uh, then after a while the when when you throw a particle then of course it starts more or less in a straight line manner but over the time it follows a parabolic profile so it it mainly because uh, the particle um because of the gravity falls on the uh, on the ground so basically the ac the gravity at that point is uh, acting as a force and it is pulling the particle down towards it uh, uh, so it doesn't matter what kind of force you have applied uh, it may go far or it may fall right next to you uh, it will always follow a parabolic profile and uh, we will try to derive that Uh, how um, that parabolic profile and uh, we'll first see how we can do that so suppose um, we have uh, a moving particle so suppose if we have uh, we have a uh, if we have a if a moving particle if a moving particle of mass m be subjected to the action of gravity of gravity alone then the equation of motion equation of motion of motion of the particle so equation of motion as you remember p is equals to m times a so a is the acceleration and p is the force and the force is given by m times d square r by dt square right so that the, the force is given by m times d square r by dt square and the right hand side is minus m g k where k is where k is the unit vector is the unit vector drawn vertically upwards right so now if we cancel m from both sides then this is basically our d square r by dt square is equals to minus g times the vector k and uh, if i integrate both sides then in that case this will be dr dt which is basically our velocity v dr dt means v and this side will be minus of g t k plus some constant vector b and if i integrate again if i integrate again then in that case this will be r times uh, r so r is equals to so if i integrate again so r is equals to this will be minus g 
t square by 2 times k plus b t plus some vector c. So, let me call it as equation number. So, this is our equation number 1, this is our equation number 2, this is our equation number 3. So, I integrated both sides of these equations and when you integrate, I am assuming you are familiar with the um, with that uh, ordinary differential equations. Uh, so, I integrated with respect to t. So, we will get a constant vector b and then I again integrated and then I got a constant vector c. Now, we have to find the values for b and c. So, the values will be, so if, uh, so when t equals to 0, so when t equals to 0, so when t equals to 0 at time t 0, at that time the velocity v and the initial velocity would be same. So, the initial velocity at t equals to 0 is same as the velocity v. So, I can write v equals to u. So, u is my initial velocity. So, then from 2, from 2 we will have, uh, what do we have? So, v is equals to u, this term will be 0 and b. So, this will be v uh, u equals to vector b. So, if I use this uh, in this equation, so I can substitute u here. Now, when t equals to 0, now again when t equals to 0, then the vector r will be 0 because uh, when t equals to 0, then the particle is not moving. Uh, um, so, uh, at that time, uh, basically the position vector r would also be 0. So, when t equals to 0, r is equals to 0 and uh, then from 3, we will have 0 and uh, here we will have uh, 0, 0. So, c is also a 0 vector. So, c is equals to a 0 vector not implication, but we can write that is c equals to 0. Therefore, from 2, therefore, uh, sorry, from 3 actually, therefore, from 3, we will have r is equals to minus uh, half g t square k plus, what do we have? u t, u is the initial velocity and c is 0. So, this is the required uh, equation of the uh, motion of the, so this is the, the, this is the required uh, um, how to say uh, locus of the point p. So, I can write uh, the locus, the locus of r is a plane curve on the plane determined by the vectors uh, vec the determined by the vector u vectors u and k and the origin. So, the origin and the vector u and k will determine the locus of r and uh, if we consider uh, and so this is the required equation. Uh, of uh, equation of the particle p actually moving along the curve and th the basically this is the equation of the curve um, uh, along which the particle is moving and if if we consider if we consider so one particular case so if we consider consider u and k as uh, the x axis and y axis respectively respectively then from this one is equation number 4 then from 4 we find that so if we equate so here i can substitute uh, um, here i substitute um, basically um, so, if it is x axis, then uh, this one will be u comma 0 and uh, if it is y axis, then this will be um, just uh, 0 uh, and uh, 
0 comma k and then I can equate the coefficients. So, basically we find that x equals to uh, mod of u times t and y equals to minus of half g t square. So, eliminating t. So, if I substitute for t here, so this will be uh, x by u. So, uh, eliminating t will be, so eliminating t would give y equals to minus of half g by mod of u square uh, x square. So, this shows that the path is a parabola. So, this shows that path is a parabola. So, that means when you throw the, st the, the stone or a particle like this, then in the, so if you throw like this, I do not know if you can be able to see in that video or not. So, if you throw like this, then basically your u is x axis and your k is uh, let us say y axis. So, then in that case, the, the particle is actually following a parabolic path and uh, that is that is what we were trying to establish. So, you see using just some simple co concepts of uh, vector calculus, we did not even complicate things. We were able to derive the equation or the uh, sorry the, the curve along which the particle p or in that case uh, the stone p let us say uh, move along that curve. All right. So, uh, this is um, one of the interesting applications of uh, vector calculus basically in mechanics. Um, let me see in my notes if I have uh, uh, anything other, anything else interesting to show. Um, so, uh, um, next uh, we can derive the harmonic motion. Uh, so, let me give you a small example. Uh, what do you mean by harmonic motion? So, equation of motion for the harmonic motion. So, harmonic motion So, basically the equation of motion of a particle subjected to a force subjected to a force towards a fixed point towards a fixed point and uh, with magnitude and with magnitude proportional to its distance proportional to its distance from the fixed point is given by so so basically what we have is we have a let's say a closed curve in this case we are choosing an ellipse all right this is our origin O and uh, let us say this is the point P and uh, this is x axis and this is our y axis and uh, the magnitude is B and here in this case the magnitude is A, is A and uh, this is basically our uh, this is basically our mu times r, the position vector. All right. So what it says is the equation of motion of a particle subjected to a force towards a fixed point. So this is uh, our fixed point O, uh, and with magnitude towards a fixed point, and uh, with magnitude perpendicular. Uh, proportional to its distance from that fixed point is given by d square r by dt square minus mu r. So, basically since it is, so this vector is uh, r. So, since it is subjected so towards that fixed point O that means it is subjected 
towards that fixed point that means that uh, the, the vector is in the opposite direction. So, basically d square r by d t square is equals to it should have been uh, o p, but since it is subjected in the in, uh, in the fixed direction o then it should be ma uh, basically p o and that is basically minus of o p. So, when you change the direction of a vector then in that case you have to put a minus sign. So, that is why you have taken minus mu r or we have taken minus mu r where mu is the where mu is the constant basically. So, the general solution of this equation can be written as uh, so, if you solve this equation then basically the general solution general solution can be given by. So, if you solve this equation then in that case uh, this is basically uh, you can assume uh, r is equals to um, a cos t r is equals to a cos t and uh, vector a and uh, here cos since we have mu. So, this will be square root of mu t and this one b sin square root of mu t. So, if you substitute these solutions here then it will satisfy this equation. So, this is basically the general solution where a and b are the arbitrary vectors where a and b are the arbitrary arbitrary vectors. So, this equation is similar to what we remember from uh, our ordinary differential equation. So, d square y by d square, dx square plus um, mu y equals to 0. So, if you solve this equation then we usually obtain uh, a um, y equals to a uh, cos root mu x plus b sin root mu x. So, it is the same thing you can write r as the uh, as um, x plus x i plus y j and then you equate the coefficients of i and j and then you solve the individual equations and then you sum them to get the vector r and then you uh, take uh, a 1 plus a 2 as a new vector and a b 1 plus b 2 as the second vector and that is that is basically how you obtain this general solution. It is not complicated, but um, it is a little bit lengthy. So, I am pretty sure you can be able to do that. Now, this is our arbitrary and so this is our these are our arbitrary vectors and uh, from this equation basically uh, if we differentiate then we will obtain d r d t. Uh, which is basically our velocity v and this can be given as minus of square root of mu times uh, vector a cos square root of mu uh, sorry sin square root of mu t plus square root of mu vector b cos square root of mu t all right. So, these are the, uh, um, the, the formulas and uh, if I choose at t equals to 0. So, when t is 0 then in that case uh, when sorry. So, when t is 0 when t is 0 then basically our r is this vector a. So, in that case uh, r is the vector a and uh, v is if I substitute t equals to 0 then sin t will be uh, 0 and then this one will be cos t will be 1. So, v is equals to square root of mu b. So, square root of mu b and uh, so if the initial position so if the initial position and uh, the velocity is given so that means if the initial position and the velocity is given we can fix a and b. So, if we have the velocity of the particle and the initial position let us say that vector r then in that case we can fix up these constant a and b and uh, if the directions of and uh, if the directions if the directions of a and b are taken as x axis taken as x axis and y axis then. So, if they are taken as x axis and y axis then we can equate the first of all the coefficients from here and then it is x equals to mod of a cos square root of mu t and y is equals to mod of b sin 
square root of mu t all right and uh, this will be basically if i divide then this will be basically x square by a square and uh, y square by b square equals to 1 where a is equals to mod of a and b is equals to mod of b so if you choose x axis and uh, if you choose vector a and vector b those are basically our reference vector initially so if you choose those reference vector as x axis and y axis then basically the curve along which the particle p is moving for which uh, it is um, for which uh, the um, it is subjected to a force directed toward the origin the, the path which it follows is basically an ellipse so this is the path or this is the curve along which the particle is uh, moving. Um, this is somehow also related to our planetary motion that uh, it follows an elliptic path and uh, the force which is basically in this case the gravity uh, acting between sun and the planets um, it is actually directed towards, uh, towards that fixed point and therefore the path along which this uh, planet is moving is basically an ellipse or the curve is basically an ellipse. So, uh, um, and a and b are the length of the semi major axis and semi minor axis so this is an uh, an important uh, example which i chose to show you all and uh, do we have some other interesting examples um, of course i mean um, so here um, um, here i have uh, a lot of exams examples actually but uh, if we try to cover all of them then we probably run out of uh, time to cover the cover the other parts of the syllabus. So, let me give you an another example and uh, I will leave the derivation of the uh, equation for or of the uh, of the curve uh, up to the students. So, it is uh, uh, you have to derive the uh, derive the formula for that all right. So, the third problem is motion under the gravity subjected to the resistance proportional to velocity proportional to velocity so first of all uh, motion under gravity we know how to write d square r by dt square is equals to minus of m g k now the thing is uh, we have a resistance so that means uh, um, the, when uh, resistance against velocity so that means the particle cannot move freely it it got some kind of resistance so the resistance is actually a force which we have to subtract so it's a quantity or it's a, it's a term that we have to subtract from this uh, from from the right hand side because now you have got resistance and since it is proportional to velocity uh, we can write uh, it as m times mu times dr dt so that's the velocity m is the mass and uh, mu is some constant of proportionality so mu is the constant of pro uh, proportionality proportionality all right so if you cancel m from both sides then this is basically d square r by dt square plus mu dr dt plus gk so this is your required uh, vector equation or ordinary vector differential equations i would say uh, although there is no such thing uh, you can call it simply a differential equation um, um, or let us say ordinary uh, differential equation in terms of vectors and uh, from here you have to solve this this vector r. So, we if we saw um, if we um, how to say write these equations um, as uh, x y z and then if we try to solve it then you basically obtain r is equals to uh, uh, we will obtain r is equals to ultimately um, so, here I have a small answer. So, here we will obtain r is equals to, uh, but I, I, I would uh, ask you to derive this e to the power minus mu 2 uh, u is the initial velocity divided by mu e to the power mu t minus g k times uh, t times e to the power mu t uh, divided by mu 
minus So, this is basically t e to the power mu t divided by mu minus e to the power mu t divided by mu square and uh, plus c. So, c is a vector which we have to determine. So, this is the required equation of the path where we have to determine this constant c and uh, this is an another uh, uh, example where we have used the vector calculus to derive the uh, equation um, of the curve along which the particle is moving. So, like this uh, you can have several examples uh, from vector calculus where um, uh, or from mechanics where you will have the application of vector calculus. So, for example, um, here I have the uh, uh, inverse law of attraction, uh, then you can also write equations such as uh, planetary motions. Um, uh, speed um, of uh, of a particle on any orbit, um, things like that. So it's uh, it's not just limited to these two or three examples. Uh, there are like th I mean thousands of examples where you can uh, apply the concepts of vector calculus, or with the help of vector calculus, you can be able to write their equation of motion and um, you know, just try to solve to know the uh, uh, curve along which the particle is moving, use some initial conditions, things like that. So, we will probably uh, stop this chapter uh, here because um, I think I have covered enough examples and give you, gave you um, um, how to say enough idea uh, where uh, we use the vector calculus. Um, in, a, in mechanics. So, um, we will move on to our uh, next topic which is a uh, vector integration like um, uh, line integral, surface integral and volume integral uh, because we also have only 6 or 8 lectures left. So, I uh, will try to include some examples in your assignment sheet and uh, you can solve them and uh, you are also um, I advise you to look into some vector calculus books where they are addressing some problems from mechanics. and. Uh, um, practice them and I am pretty sure you will be able to um, how to say um, learn some new things from there and uh, it would not be any uh, problem for you. Um, so, thank you for your attention for today and I look forward to you in your next class.